The development of the leather sector is one of the top priorities of Kenya's industrial transformation program. It is supported by several facilities already present at national level, including 25 formal footwear manufacturing units, 11 registered leather products, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, 15 registered tanneries, four packaging and logistics companies, a small and medium-sized enterprise park, among others. Kenya has a big potential to develop its leather sector. The country contributes to only 3.5% of leather production on the African continent, despite having the third biggest livestock resource in Africa after Ethiopia and Tanzania. So there is no business without product and you know product is king, it's the first step to marketing or so they say. So you see like key holders as I mentioned to you will make different designs that can be used. Um, then for beauty pouches we make something durable, at least you protect your, your, we put a small seal here that will protect your kitenge because you know when you put it in your bag what happens. And these things are not very pricey and then inside we make sure it's, it's um, made with they, they, they're what we call raincoats, it doesn't spill. Oh, stop! Yeah, you can't spill anything in your bag, you know. What? That's exactly. special? Exactly. Yes, that's the uniqueness of our products. As I told you, it deals with the need. We look at the pain of our clients and then we make them. See, like the belts, these are hand-stitched. See this? So it has a new, it has a design. Uh, and I'm oh, not sure. This, yeah. local, for example. this bag, so this is 2,500. The belt. Eh? Yeah, the belts are 2,500, and you can see the quality, and it's all pure leather. And we have also some little uh, African. Then you need the hair ons, yeah, on it. Um, then this clutch bags. Our evenings can also look good. Eh? See, and it's really good inside. You put some unique kitenges there. Very nice, you can use it anywhere. So we have different wallets, ladies' wallets, um, get driving license holders, or maybe it can be even a passport holder. And you see this is hand stitch also, yeah. So we use that a lot. And as I say, you got to look good. Once in a while you put something different and unique. When you go to the tunnel, you get leather. And this, this, this one has uh, been brought by a client and we have been able to stitch for them this. Right. Okay. There it is. So we, they come and were inspired by our own, our own um, bags. And so, so it has a little bit of their materials that has remained inside. So this is uh, another inspiration from one of our, some of our bags. So this is a fabric we are testing that uh, can come with a, with a leather bag. So I'm sure you will see it's an executive, unique kind of bag. So we will use kit, steel kitengas inside, the different designs, of how you want it to look like. So this will go according to the client's request most of the times. We call it uh, Kenya. You know how Kenya looks like? A king, a king, yes, a gourd. The shape of a gourd. Eh? As I mentioned to you, the shape alone just makes us want to, to make our things in a way that, the, 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 as I said, the inspiration. It's like a gourd, the shape, you see? Yeah. Mm, so, and this is our mathematics, you know? <laughs> But it's one of the most uh, fastest moving parts. Oh, really? Yes. Why do you think that? So? I, I think because of just the patterns, the fact that you can use it with different uh, colors. You see, it has a, a different color of the main body, and then it has all this. This are this is two colors that you can also use it. So you know, most people want something that they can use with different colors. Yeah. And as I mentioned, the bones idea. This is a bone. 
that we have used also. So it gives a, it's a, like a button or something. Mm -hmm. so and we love hair on. I'm sure you've seen the hair on. It's quite, yeah. it's something that we also uh, use a lot. So what about naming of the product? We discuss within ourselves. Um, what does it reflect? What if you see a bag? Some of the bags, the shape, the shape may be like um, we have a bag we call moate. In in Kenya, uh, in Kikuyu, moate is where the bees, the beehive. It looks the shape is close to how the beehive goes like this, so we call it moate. It's inspired by what it looks close to it. Or sometimes it's just about environment. Uh, like we have one bag, you can see that bag there with like two boxes, boxes. Um, and my dear friend here, we started calling it mathematics. <laughs> because it just looks like, you know, what, the way you go to school and you, you see, remember how they used to put for us the boxes and you put two year, one year, and then you do the calculation. So what, what, how we call the bags is inspired by even sometimes the, the person who first came with the idea, sometimes we can name it after, um, after them, uh, or somebody who came with a need that we thought would um, call after them. Uh, the bugs you calculate, you have to take care of all your production costs. Um, leather is not necessarily cheap, and when you buy, it has quite a large amount of waste. So when I'm cutting for you, I want you to get the cleanest part of my bag, and of the leather. And so meaning I have several parts that I cannot use. So that has to be captured within the, the price of the bag. Um, we also take care of all the other costs, like my, the cost of electricity, everything that brings together my whole entire production process, from the leather, to the lining, to the stitching, to the zips, yes, to the foams, to the studs, to the sliders. You know, there are so many small, small things when it comes to bags. But the, we aim at getting the best quality that we can in, within the country. We still have challenges on sourcing of accessories. And um, I think the people who are helping us out now are the ones who make brass items. We work with a small group of youth and, 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 there's, and a couple who produce from their homes uh, in, in Rogai. So you can get that kind of uh, people to also accessorize your bags. Sometimes the bones look so nice, you can even call it after that bone. <laughs> So basically, that's how the, the bags are. Um, uh, we come together and make the bags. What makes your product stand out? There's something, if you see the bones like this, would you know it's a bone? Look at the art in it. This, this is art only you find here in Kenya, most likely. So what happens is this. The bones, the, 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 there's some youth groups in Kibera who have been trained and uh, some of them were facilitated to start small businesses on, on doing different types of things with bones. And over time, they have learned how to be artistic and they are able to produce what you are looking for. So when you go there, you design with them. You design what you want. So like for me, I will be looking for, let's say this pipe thing, or I would look for the ones that we call the horn. You have seen, you have seen the horn bag. It has a small horn-like shape of a bone that, where you can put different things. So it gives you a diff that's what makes us different from all over the world, people who are producing bags. Anything produced in Kenya, you will see it is unique, it's different. The beading is so unique, and especially it is done by um, our Maasai, uh, like the Maasai women. We have a few of them who come and sit here in the office and make the designs that we want. I can give you, for example, Ush. Can I stand? So this one is recently done. It's a part of, to be put in a, some different parts of the, uh, the bags. It's like a belt, but it's put, to be put in the bags. So when you look at it, you see um, the uniqueness in it. So the, it spends, it's a lot of time spent to finish one, this you can see teaching? this is hand stitching. This is all hand stitched. I, I'm sure you have seen the belts that are made like this. So for us, this is for using it as a straps or decoration within the bag. Yes.
we are a medium, now we are heading towards being a medium sized company. We've been, you know, micro, micro. So we moved now to small. So we are looking forward to getting to be the medium size, size of a company. Yes. All the best. Grace Bugwa is a real boss lady from starting from her house to owning an office to even employed staff. She has defied all odds when it comes to this industry. Sadly, that's it for our episode of Boss Lady. Um, I have to say goodbye. Till next week, remember, you can always reach us on our social media platforms. That's at Metropole TV Kenya across all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and at The Nina Shaban on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Bye-bye, till next time.